Only a few hours ago, SpaceX released new angles of Starship's upper stage completing its landing burn. Not only do we get the full video from the buoy camera, but they also had a drone positioned right next to the ship as it flipped and splashed down. This gives us a much higher quality and complete picture of the damage the vehicle sustained, how the heat shield held up, the accuracy of the landing, and more. Here I'll go more in depth into the new footage and the splashdown of the ship. The first video shared by SpaceX is from the drone. It starts right at the end of the flip maneuver as the center Raptor engine gimbals to orient and point the stage vertically. As confirmed by SpaceX, you can see that all three Raptors are firing. It then lowers partially out of frame and makes contact with the water. As it starts to tip over, the video fades out. With how clear the video is, there's a bunch of details you can make out when pausing the footage. For example, looking at the bottom of the stage, you can see exactly where the destruction around the engine skirt is. During the flight, around T plus 47 minutes, we watched as there was a large flash followed by that portion of the skirt being destroyed, sending debris everywhere and also damaging the flap. Looking back at the video, you can see the mangled section and how far up the damage actually went. It also looks to be pretty well aligned with the flap. Part of this damage, at least to the aft flaps, had to do with reentry heating. Over the course of reentry, we watched the plasma and heat slowly eat away at those bottom corners. In that case, once a weak point is found and some of the heat shielding is destroyed, it then becomes even more vulnerable. That being said, even with this damage, the ship was able to complete its flip in an accurate landing. Another interesting detail from this video has to do with all the coloration seen to the ship's heat shield. When looking at new images, there are some pretty obvious white streaks in very specific spots down the center of the heat shield, surrounded by orange. In regard to this, a lot of those center white spots actually align with the places where SpaceX was testing different materials for heat shields. In images before the launch, you can see parts down the center of the heat shield where tiles are missing. Specifically, on Flight 10, SpaceX noted that some of the heat shield tests include different metallic tile options, actively cooled tiles, and other alternative materials. What's also clear from the image is that the actual base black tiles look to have held up very well, and are visible beneath the orange and white residue. Some thought, based on video from the livestream, that the orange could have been core structure oxidation. In other words, it was speculated that the main heat shield tiles were either lost or used up from re-entry heating. Fortunately for SpaceX, the majority looked to have held up quite well. Focusing back on the drone shot, one of the other big points it highlights is the accuracy of the landing. We knew that with its proximity to the buoy it was close, but this video puts it in perspective. In SpaceX's official tweet, they said, View of Starship landing burn and splashdown on Flight 10, made possible by SpaceX's recovery team. Starship made it through re-entry with intentionally missing tiles, completed maneuvers to intentionally stress its flaps, had visible damage to its aft skirt and flaps, and still executed a flip and landing burn that placed it approximately 3 meters from its targeted splashdown point. That's quite a big deal and is a good sign for the future. While on actual launches, we've only seen the ship make a splashdown, in the future, SpaceX wants to catch the upper stage similar to the booster. In order for that to be possible, they need to be nearly perfect when landing. It's also worth noting that the 3 meter miss from its target was with a decent amount of damage not only to the engine skirt but also both aft flaps, which play a big role in controlling Starship during its descent and flip. Besides the drone shot, we also got a full video of the final landing burn from the buoy camera. This video starts with the ship horizontal in its belly flop position. It then ignites its engines, swinging the bottom of the stage to the opposite side before aligning itself vertically and slowly lowering itself into the water. Right before making contact with the ocean, you can also see one of the three sea level Raptor engines shut off. Right after it makes contact and starts to flip over, the video fades out. When comparing this footage with the provided onboard telemetry, it helps give an idea of the speed and height this mission milestone is taking place at. Roughly aligning the buoy angle start time, you can see the ship is traveling around 300 kilometers an hour and dropping fast. It's also at an altitude of around 0.5 kilometers. Immediately after engine ignition, it rapidly slows down while still descending very quickly. From engine ignition to splashdown is only about 14 seconds in total. Another interesting detail is just how much it moves during this maneuver. That initial engine ignition and swing is substantial, and will make future catch attempts very nerve-wracking as the ship comes in at over 300 kilometers an hour at somewhat of an off angle. In a statement from the company right after the flight, they were quoted saying, Moving into the critical re-entry phase, Starship was able to gather data on the performance of its heat shield and structure as it was intentionally stressed to push the envelope on vehicle capabilities. Using its four flaps for control, the spacecraft arrived at its splashdown point in the Indian Ocean, successfully executed a landing flip, and completed the flight test with a landing burn and soft splashdown, they said. Despite this stress testing, the forward flaps looked to have held up very well. Beginning with Starship V2, the design of these forward flaps was significantly changed, moving them leeward and becoming thinner and angled. The purpose was to help improve reliability, ease of manufacturing, and payload to orbit. 
With this being the first actual flight test of Starship V2 that ended with a soft splashdown, these changes look to have worked well. Out of all 10 Starship flights, there have been two that ended with a daytime soft splashdown of the upper stage. Besides the recent Flight 10, the other example was Flight 6, with Starship V1. Similar to the video just released by SpaceX, back on Flight 6, we got some great views of the landing and the state of the ship. When comparing the two, it looks like in some ways the V2 ship heat shield held up much better. One of the most noticeable differences is the charring. On Flight 6, we got a view of the side of the ship right before it entered the water, and while there were no mystery colors like Flight 10, it was obvious the heat of re-entry had done a number on the ship, mainly the sides. Now looking at the drone shot from Flight 10, we don't get the best view, but the side of the ship looks to be in much better condition with practically all the stainless steel in great shape with few signs of heating. This was another big focus with Starship V2 and the heat shield in general. In fact, after Flight 6, SpaceX was quoted saying, The entire ship's tile line also received a smooth and tapered edge to address hot spots observed during re-entry on Starship 6 flight test. The onboard footage from both flights highlights this as well. On Flight 6, it's clear that the heat shield is not tapered and simply stops. We also see some serious heating and charring to the side of the stage and stainless steel. Looking at Flight 10, the edge of the heat shield is nearly flush with the stainless steel. Granted, some charring is clearly visible, but in comparison to Flight 6, it looks much better. Currently, there is one more Starship V2 flight planned before SpaceX moves on to V3. At that point, we can expect a bunch of new upgrades and with it, possible ship catch attempts. In order for that to happen, SpaceX will need to prove the upper stage is not only very reliable, but also extremely accurate and ready to attempt a catch back at the launch pad in stage zero. With the progress on a second tower and pad, there should be more options for launch and landing attempts in the future. After Flight 10, in a statement the company said, over the course of a flight test campaign, success will continue to be measured by what we're able to learn. And Starship's 10th flight test provided valuable data by stressing the limits of vehicle capabilities and providing maximum excitement along the way. They went on to say, Starship completed a full duration ascent burn and achieved its planned velocity, successfully putting it on a suborbital trajectory. The first in-space objective was then completed, with eight Starlink simulators deployed and the first successful payload demonstration from Starship. SpaceX just released new videos of Starship's upper stage completing its splashdown in the Indian Ocean. With it, we're able to get a much better idea of how it held up during flight and the impact re-entry heating had on the vehicle as a whole. Over the next few weeks, we can expect even more information from the company in addition to more video of the flight. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.